Talia, I have my doctorate in neuroscience, and when I talk to a lot of people and explain how the science works, which seems to indicate that free will is an illusion, I get a lot of blowback. A lot of people get very angry from philosophers, common people, social psychologists. Um, you believe free will in common definition is an illusion. Yes. And I want to know why. Okay. And that's the key, the common definition of free will, which I, which I believe to be my conscious self is freely deciding, initiating courses of action. Um, there's no scientific evidence that that's the case. In fact, it, it lines up on the other side. Well, most people would presume that the burden of proof is on you if you say it's an illusion because the sense of, of, of consciousness, of free will being intrinsic, is the strongest feeling I absolutely, have. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So the burden most is not on me to say why uh, I believe in free will. The burden right. is on somebody else to tell me why what seems to be incredibly obvious is, is, yes. is, is false. Yes. It's the most compelling illusion, I think, <laughs> that we have, right. Um, well, we agree it's, it's compelling. Now, it's compelling, it? yes. Um, it's our intuition that our conscious selves are the deciders, the initiators of our action. Right. Um, but science actually suggests that it's not that, and that because we only have access to our conscious experience, that we're only seeing that and making all these conclusions that this is all there is, but actually neuroscience has shown that um, you know, before I want to pick up my coffee cup, I've, neurons have already got decided you know, how my hand is going to move to pick up the coffee cup, even before I'm aware that I want to. So it seems like consciousness is coming very late uh, in the stream of things to be causal in the way we think of a conscious self causing action. We, of course, only see I had the thought to pick up the coffee cup, and I picked it up, and then we chuck that as the beginning and the end, mm. and we miss all of this neural activity that's actually creating the action before we're even aware of it. Mm. Well, certainly there's unconscious uh, uh, feeds, inputs into yes. everything we do, uh, and I think that needs to be appreciated. Um, even though we don't feel it, because by definition it's unconscious. Right. Um, and so it comes up and it may make me now want to pick up the coffee cup, but I still feel that, that when I make that decision, I'm initiating it at that, at that point, even if I know yes. that there's inputs into it. But at, at that moment of decision, I am making that decision to do it, even though there are these prior inputs that are yes. pushing me there. And to be fair, science cannot yet, although we have an experiment that we hope to answer this question, science as yet cannot rule out that there's sort of a, a tipping point, that there's all this neural activity that is, is going towards making the action, and then we become consciously aware, and somehow that's some magical tipping point that actually the action wouldn't occur mm -hmm. without it. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's so late in the stream that that would be uh, implausible, but we can't rule it out. Um, but I will say that uh, most people who fight for free will, including neuroscientists, um, the best evidence that they sort of marshal is how compelling it feels right. to be a conscious agent. But lots of things feel compelling that we now know scientifically aren't true. There's lots of visual illusions, for example, that I can tell you, you know, um, this gray square is a different color than this right. other gray square, you know, and you know physically that that's true, that there are different hues, but they look exactly the same to you, and you can't, you're just compelled to see it that way. Um, and you know it's an illusion, uh, but it's still compelling. Compelling is not enough. Compelling isn't proof. Mm -hmm. Having a compelling intuition, that's not science. Okay, well, what is science? You told me some of the, of the, the, the neural You've told me some of the neuronal activity prior to the, the, the conscious feeling. Right. Uh, what, what other? You've done some experiments that yes. I, I think show that uh, you can create a conscious feeling of, uh, of free will in something you don't do? That's exactly it. That's, uh, that's another uh, source of evidence we have for why there may not be something like a conscious free will. Um, and that is that you can push it around. You can push the feeling around. You can create it where it shouldn't be there. You can take it away when it should. And if you can push this thing around so much, then what's it doing? Push it around. How, okay. how are you going to push it around? Okay, so um, another source of evidence we have for uh, why we may not have this kind of free will that 
most people think about this, conscious decider doing actions, is that the feeling of free will can be pushed around so much. You can make people feel will for things they didn't do. You can take it away when they really should have it. And so if you can push it around, this feeling, then what's it really doing? Um, one way we push this feeling around, when I was a graduate student working with Dan Wegner at the University of Virginia, is we created a situation in which a person was doing an ambiguous action. Um, so they would come in as a subject to the experiment. They would uh, be told, your job is to move this big computer mouse around with this other person. This other person they thought was another subject. Actually, it's not. It's an it's a employee of the um, ex experiment. And they're together moving this mouse around. And they think it's an incredibly boring task where they just have to move it around and then every now and then stop and, and say, did you do that stop or did the other person? So they're moving the computer uh, mouse around. And this is moving actually a cursor around on a screen. And on the screen is a bunch of different objects. Um, and so they move the thing around and they stop and they rate. Now this is the way we manipulated free will in this. Uh, is we gave them headphones. And they're listening to these words through their headphones. And we just tell them, this is just to give you a mild distraction because we know it's such a boring task. Don't pay attention to it. You're listening to words. The other person's listening to some other kinds of words. And we even said, OK, let me just make sure the, the tapes are working. Tell me what word you just heard. And they would say, monkey. And the other person would say, sunglasses. That was important. I'll come back to that. So they think they're listening to different words. The reason why that's important is this allowed us to set up the situation in which the subject is moving the mouse around with the employee of the experiment, and they hear a word, like monkey, in their headphones. And this is the moment when the employee of the experiment is told through their headphones, stop on the monkey on the screen. So you get the experience as a subject hearing monkey, and then you see yourself stop on the monkey on the screen. And that's, that was completely forced by the other person, but you hear the thought, you see yourself to act, and lo and behold, you say, I did that. Wow. You just make it ambiguous enough, you give people a thought in their headphones, which is just the word, a consistent action. They think they're the only, they, the other person did not hear that same word, they put it all together and said, I must have done that. And we showed that there's a, there's a time window. So if the person hears monkey, has about five seconds, stops on the monkey, or maybe just a second stops on the monkey, they say, I did that. But if you give the person monkey 30 seconds later, the person across from them makes them stop on the monkey, they say, no, that wasn't me. So there has to be a thought. There has to be some time consistency right. related to the action. Yes. And there has to be a sense that only I heard it. That's right. Priority, it has to occur, the thought has to occur right before uh -huh. the action. Exclusivity, I'm the only one, I think, mm -hmm. that had the thought mm -hmm. to do the action. I'm the only cause of mm -hmm. my behavior. And consistency has to match. So therefore, you created a situation That's where right. the person imagined they had total free will, and in fact, they had zero. They had zero free will, but we manipulated these three things, and boom, the brain coded that as, I did it. Hence, free will is an illusion. Yes, it may be, at least a confabulation. <laughs>